if I get closest to the pin, then you have got to get me a ticket for the Scotland Ireland game in the World Cup. And if you get closest to the pin, I have to get you a ticket to the Ryder Cup. All right. Deal? Deal. 100%. <laughs> Let's do it. Welcome back to On the Road with Iona, another very special episode with a very special guest. Meet Stuart McAnally. Showbiz, eh? A rugby international who will shortly be heading into retirement. We talked to Stuart at Glen Eagles today about his life to this point and his big plans for becoming a pilot in the future. I'm good. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> no, thanks for having me. So good to see you. Oh, what a treat. Hi, yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. So Rambo, Stuart, Rambo, how does it go? <laughs> Let's go uh, Rams is what Rams. I'm, Rams is what I'm currently known as. Rambo and Stuart. Yeah, we'll go those, those three. Okay, we'll go with Rams. Yeah. And obviously we are so pleased that you've taken the time out of, out of your busy life to come and spend a bit of time on the golf course with me on the road with Iona YouTube channel. And the reason that I wanted to bring you here and to have this wee blether with you was just to hear a little bit about what you've been up to because obviously coincidentally, we've known each other for a very long time, like going all the way back to school. And in that time, you've played rugby professionally. You've captained Edinburgh, you've captained Scotland. You've been having a whale of a time. And now you're getting to quite a poignant moment in your career where you've, you've sort of publicly said that you're, you're get gearing up towards retirement, which we know can be a real transition for a professional athlete. So it feels like a really special time to have a conversation with you and a reflective time perhaps to hear about what you've been up to in your life and how you feel like it's kind of all playing out to this your 32nd year on planet earth yeah it's funny you say it all like that it's uh it, i feel like i've been lucky to do so much with rugby but yeah it's gone so fast as everyone tells you it does mm. i remember when you're just starting out and you're at the, the end of season dinner, it's maybe your first year and uh, the guys are leaving saying, oh, blink, blink and you'll be here, you know, savor every moment. And you, you try to along the way and there's some good times and there's some not so good times. But yeah, sure enough, I'm now at that point. I was the one on the stage at the end of season dinner telling everyone that I was hanging up my boots and the reasons for it. And I always had it planned. Like I, uh, I'd planned for a while that I, when I was on stage telling everyone that I wanted to stop playing, that it was going to be for a positive reason and that it was going to be a transition into a new career rather than being forced out of, out of one. I see so many rugby players finish their rugby career, unfortunately due to injury or because of non-selection and, and they don't get a contract and they, they're kind of left trying to find anything. I was determined not to be that person. I wanted to choose whether I was going to keep playing or choose whether I was going to stop and and this year just felt like the right time to stop. I've always had contract offers and it always felt like the right decision to, it was always, you know, sign another contract and keep playing or go and chase my original dream of being a commercial airline pilot. Mm. And it always felt right to keep doing the rugby, whereas this year just the time's right, you know, and I, I, knew, I'd, I knew I'd know when the time was right and it's, and it's this year and yeah, I've got, I've had an exciting last career and I'm, I'm really excited for the next one as well. <laughs> Tee shots have been good. Yesterday lost a lot of shots around like 80 yards and then, especially off a of Lynx fairway I'm not used to. So there's like one, like hit a really nice drive, I can't remember what hole it was. I was on uphill lie in a divot, into wind, about 80 yards away. I don't like, I was just guessing, I don't know how to play that shot. Yeah. Like, is there even a way to play that? That's like my bread and butter, that. Oh, is it? Yeah. I can't handle all this grass. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, really? Tight Lynx turf is my dream. That just scares me. When I, when I put the, the club behind the ball and it's, it's not nestling under it nicely, uh -huh. that just gives me the fear. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just love that because just nip it off the top. Ah, uh, see, that's where I guess where I struggle a little bit. Yeah. Like, I try and play bump and runs, but because I'm not, I don't play them a lot. I, I, had a, I think I had three or four like, just duffs yesterday, which isn't normal for me. Like, I don't duff the ball uh -huh. loads. It's a totally different style of golf, isn't it? Yeah. If you could describe yourself at this chapter in your life using three words, what three words would you use? Content. That's probably the first one that jumps out. 
ambitious. I've had a good career with, with rugby and it's hopefully still got a little bit more to go with the World Cup still ahead of us. But I've got one eye on the next thing as well. Like, uh, I've always been driven. There you go, that can be my third word. Your third. Driven. I like, I like aiming for something and, and chasing it. And I like one of my, my main purpose in life I figured out years ago. Um, and I always thought it was my family. But it's not, like that's a given that I do stuff for them, and my, my wee boy and my wife. And But the real reason I get up and do what I do is because I, like, I want to squeeze every drop out of my potential. It's always been my thing. And, and I've learned that recently is whatever, whatever Stuart McAnally, like this body, this mind was meant to get out of rugby, I wanted to achieve it. So that's, I think that's a big part of why I've, I've done what I've done is I've always looked for ways to be better like all the time. And when you're younger, you focus on you, very, you learn very quickly, you focus on trying to be man of the match or you focus on trying to play for Scotland and that classic focusing on the outcome, it, mm. it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Whereas learn very quickly focusing and, uh, on just trying to get better and, and doing more than other people I found was huge. And um, yeah, that allowed me to ultimately achieve all my goals really of playing and captaining Edinburgh and playing for and captaining Scotland. The one I didn't probably make was the Lions. I always had that goal, but um, Unfortunately, was injured that year and uh, never really got a chance to, to fire a shot. And that's just the way of it. The Lions is a lot about timing as well. And I was sad I never never added that to my list. But I love I loved goal setting and I'm a massive advocate for it. And I, when I was younger, I realised I'd, I'd, I'd not not achieve a goal. Or I'd be like, right, I want to be starting this week. Big game, Heineken Cup, I want to be starting. And I, I wouldn't be starting and i think, oh, I've not achieved my goal. Like That's a failure, right? Whereas probably over the last couple of years, I realized that having goals for me just gives me real clarity. Like I wanted, um, I wanted to get 30 caps for Scotland and I got 30 and then I wanted 40 and then I got 40 and then I wanted 50 and I'm currently on 47. And um, if I never get capped again, I'd be gutted, but I wouldn't feel to see that as a failure now because the 50 caps is just a goal for me and allows me something to work towards, but it doesn't define whether I've been successful or not, which mm -hmm. is quite hard to see when you're younger, like you just want to achieve everything. And um, But yeah, I found that's really helped me. Have, having stuff to work towards gives me clarity, but also if you don't achieve your goals, it's not, it's not a failure, is it? It doesn't define you. No. Looks good. Hold on. That's that fade I've been looking for. Yeah, I know, that's what you've been talking about. <laughs> Strike. Yeah. There's a peach. Happy. Love that. But there's nothing quite like that opening tee at St Andrews. No. But I have to say, as far as opening holes go, this is quite remarkable. Stunning, isn't it? Like that backdrop. This is what golf, you know, a different kind of golf in Scotland. A lot of people think of like Lynx golf. Yeah. And that's no. mostly what I've played, but this is, oh, I just like, I don't know about you, but even with all the cameras, and everything, I just feel so good when I come onto yeah. the golf course. I'm just like. I love it. Oh, well, I, just, I love the, like the walk. This is why I like, I, don't, I never use a buggy. Like I love the walk. Yeah. Like whether it's been a good shot or not, it's a, uh, like I can, I'll enjoy the walk or I'll, you know, use the walk to get over the bad shot. Yes, there'll be loads of, parents probably watching this with young children there'll be you know new parents there'll be people in themselves watching this looking at you Rams as this real you know quite an incredible role model really you are and you know you you've obviously been a huge role model you never know quite how far those ripples are are gonna go you know there might be somebody that's a million miles disconnected from rugby that will take one seed of inspiration from something that you've done and the behavior that you've displayed. Where have you got that drive from in your life? Where, because you can't buy that, you can't just go to a shop and, and say, well, I'll take a, a good ounce of drive, please. Like, where has that come from? I guess from my, like, my parents. My dad is the hardest working and smartest guy that I know. He still works. He could have retired a long time ago if he wanted, but he still works. He loves to work. He loves to learn. That's definitely where I get my love of learning as well. But I do, I do 
believe I was thankful in the way I was raised. It was never about, um, I know friends, for example, who were they were at school, they needed, needed motivation to achieve good grades and they would could be motivated by 50 pounds for an A or 100 pounds for an A. And I remember saying to my mum, I was like, well, why am I not getting 100 pounds for an A? And she was like, you're not doing it for me. Like, it's your life. You know, if you want to have a good life, you do it for yourself. Don't, don't get an A for me. Mm. And I don't remember loads about that time in my life, naturally, but I remember that. And, uh, and another part of it, I think, is like, I, I hate letting people down. It's a, I don't always love that side of me because I put a lot of pressure on myself. But I do think in a team environment, that's probably helped me always make sure I know my stuff and, and know my detail. And then I guess it comes back to what I said earlier, like I've, I've always just wanted to squeeze every drop out of my, my ability. And um, I've enjoyed, I enjoy the process. Like that's probably the biggest thing, I enjoy learning. I guess it's, it's probably my biggest strength and it's, it's a big part of why I love golf as well. Like the hunt for perfection, even though you know you're never gonna get it. Like that, that uh, I just love it and I love, I love it when a plan comes together and you do some work on your, your putting or your chipping in the short game area and then you drain a big putt. Like, it's a great feeling. And, uh, and I, I, obviously I learn a lot of that through, through the rugby as well. So where do you normally play your golf? Kingsfield Golf Club, just, uh, just near Lin Linlithgow. Okay. They're a nine hole course, family run. I went initially for a golf fitting mm -hmm. and just feel like I've never left. Like the people there are just so friendly. How's your bunker game? Oh, hit and miss, I own it. <laughs> well out. A bit, of, bit of bite on it. Yeah. Not bad. Playing golf. Uh-huh. Did it crail? And you sunk everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything. I know. That was a ridiculous day. I have not putted like that since. Not outside the cup, I'm going to say. Like it, like it a lot. Oh, <laughs> how good. That's the part we're talking about. And she's back. Right. Oh. Well done. Door. This goal, and you mentioned it there, of wanting to be a pilot, and then rugby kind of came along and got in the way. Yeah. Almost. Inconveniently, conveniently. I joke about it, but it's, it's absolutely true. Like I was, I was ready to go to university, to, uh, university after school, to study um, aerospace engineering. I was going to go and get my degree because I was interested in it, and then I was going to go and do my flight training, and that was always the plan. And then. Um, yeah, rugby came along. I was I was good at it, and I was being asked wanted to be in this academy and that academy and playing for the under 18s and under 20s a year early. And I realised that it was, it was when I started playing that level, like when I started playing under 20s and I was playing with the Scotland badge on. I was like, it'd be pretty cool to play for Scotland, like mm -hmm. the full team. And then, but then that became a new dream. And then flying totally took a back seat. The opportunity is on the horizon to to go and follow that dream of becoming a pilot. How exciting is that? That must feel really great. It's so exciting. You'll be able to see when I like, you know, I perk up when I talk about flying. Uh, and I've, I learned to fly back in 2014 as a private pilot, just to sort of build hours and make sure it was definitely all what I wanted to do. I didn't want to get to this point, learn, start learning to fly and I realized I hated it. I wanted to start it. I knew I would love it. It's always been something I've just spoken about as oh, I'll do it, you know, sometime in my 30s. And then as all, I've always kind of signed the next contract was this year has been like, okay, it's here. Like, I'm actually needing to plan for this. It is, it is scary. And I think the closer I've got to it, the more I've um, realized I've probably taken loads of the stuff in the rugby world for granted. Like some of the stuff we were chatting about earlier, the social day-to-day -day interaction that I've just had for the last 12 years. I've never had to chase um, a, a friendship group or find any, like constantly trying to find social interaction anywhere because it's there. You walk into Murrayfield every day and you see 40 of your best mates and you're laughing immediately mm -hmm. and you're having a bad time, someone's got their arm around you. Uh, you never have to worry about um, if you're feeling down that there's not going to be somewhere that someone there to either take your mind off it or, or pick you up. One of the hardest moments I had in my career was 2019 World Cup where I was announced as captain 
and it was a huge honour for me, and I was buzzing, um, and I was so proud. And then just before the final game of the group stages, I got dropped from the, the squad. So I, uh, Gregor decided he was going to go with someone else. The coach, sorry, was going to go with someone yeah. else. And um, I remember like, being so embarrassed by the news because I was the captain. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it was all going to be out there. And it was all anyone was going to talk about was the captain's been dropped. And I remember like, I, w I, was, I was devastated. But then we were doing the team walkthrough and um, Obviously, I wasn't in the, the team walkthrough. And then Henry, one of my friends, comes up to me. He's like, you've been dropped, Rambo. And I says, yeah. And he says, oh, don't worry. When I was captain of Glasgow, I got dropped all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was immediately like, OK, yeah, OK. Suddenly, it's maybe not as bad as I'm thinking it is. And so, someone's always got there, and someone's always got a story to tell you just to, to pull you out of something, which mm -hmm. could potentially be really, you know, really tough. And it was a tough time. Yeah. Um, but it just gives you that value of, of having to, 50 people around you, there'll be one person that's, that's going to be there for you, at least one person. Mm. So I'm definitely aware that that's something I'll be missing and it's something I'll, I'll be having to, um, to, to do on my own now. I'm going to need to be the one searching for social interaction and because it's so important to mm -hmm. mental well-being and, and I plan on using golf. I yeah. plan on using um, the sport that brings so many of us together as a way of nine holes in an evening or, or an 18 holes at the weekend if you can fit it in. Um, so yeah, that's another reason I love golf. So what role has golf played in your life from going right back to the beginning through to, through to now? It's always been there. I learned to play golf probably as a, a way to get me out of the house when I was younger. And I realized that having kids myself, like I used to think I was really lucky. Our mum threw me into every club going, but it was just probably a way to give her some peace. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it was a set every Saturday night, really fond memories of, of going to Melville Golf Centre and, and uh, getting like I down there for two hours every Saturday. And then recently, it was, uh, it was probably around 2019, it was in um, the World Cup camp for Scotland, Stevie Gallagher came in and did right. a little Q&A with us, it was brilliant. <laughs> um, I still remember the advice, I still remember the advice he gave us. Oh yeah, go on. It was the same one you gave me today, I always hit another, an extra club. Really? Yeah, it was <laughs> like, you don't hit it as far as you think, trust me, I was like, okay. And then you had to remind me of that today. I thought I was doing that. And I sent I sent a video of me putting to this put, putter maker. Yeah. And actually, it turns out I was standing too close to the ball. He was like, just just stand an inch further away, give your arms a little bit more room. And I just difference. called everything. Oh. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, he was in doing a Q&A and his best best friend, Robert, he owns uh, Kingsfield Golf Club. Yeah, I originally went for the, the golf and just stayed for the people there. Like, just the family run place. Um, they love rugby, they love um, supporting charities and just good people mm. and you stick around for good people don't you? Mm -hmm. And you meet plenty of them in golf that's for sure. What could you use? Yeah I don't know you're meeting up for coffees or going for beers uh -huh. like, as a way of staying social or you're, you're seeing I don't know friends with kids and stuff and as good as that is whenever I see go out to see my friends and we've got our kids with us it's just all the kids like yeah. as, it, as it should be. Time on. But you're, uh, yeah. But you actually have very little time to just catch up properly. Saying that with golf, it's you can play a whole round with someone, and my wife will ask me, "What did you chat about?" And I'll say, "I, I don't know." I they had a really, good, I only had a really good drive, and we were like <laughs> saying how nice that was and how she plays. A, it's nonsense, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just like sometimes the company is all you need. Yeah, agreed. You don't need to really talk about anything. It's just. Good company goes a long way. I've got 200 to that water on my watch. <laughs> Perfect. How far to the green? <laughs> I'm not really thinking about it. <laughs> 239, the flag. Okay. Yeah, I can tell. Relationship rebuilt, is it? <laughs> <laughs> a bit skinny. Ah, we're okay. okay. We're okay. But just, well, for me, I'm not having my three-wood well. It doesn't go in the bag. <laughs> well, <laughs> I so, think that's what's the beauty about days like this. You yeah, know? true. It and you matter. have to push yourself to yeah. like have days like this. I think where you can leave the ego somewhere before the first tee, and it's ah, a really yeah. hard thing to do. But it can be so enjoyable to give yourself the freedom yeah. to to try things. And it's no surprise you you play better. Yeah. Is it? 
I, that's the thing in rugby as well. Like you get told, oh, play free, just just enjoy it. Yeah. Like, just try and enjoy it. But it's so hard to do when you're in that pressure cooker. Uh huh. Because there's so much riding on, and you're like I've said this before. You're only ever one game away from your last game. Yeah. Especially at the top level. Like if you have a bad game and. You mean because of injury or? No, no. Like say say you don't perform well. You have a really. I've seen it before. Players have a, a shocker and they don't play again. Really. It can be ruthless, and or, or yeah, there can be an injury, and then someone else comes through and plays well. So there's always that pressure. And wow, I'd never even thought about that. Yeah, which and actually, because since I announced my retirement, I've played maybe five or six games. Played really well. Didn't even didn't even think about it. Like, I wasn't worried about making mistakes. If I did make a mistake, it wasn't it didn't bother me. Really. Because. I don't know, it was just like, I'm just gonna, I've got nothing, nothing left to prove. Like, I'm gonna get my best version out there and hopefully it's good enough to go to this World Cup because it'd be amazing. But I just think it's, it's great advice, but it's so hard to follow when you're actually yep. in the thick of it. Who's the most free player you've ever like witnessed? I like watching Blair Kinghorn play okay. at Edinburgh. He's um, like, the personality fits that trait of, you know, he's not bothered about what people think of him uh -huh. in, a, in a really good way. Like yeah. he's, he's very confident in himself. He won't let, he won't let mistakes bother him. And I like, I find, I find that I'm like in awe of that because I put a lot of pressure on myself. And I do think it's part of why I've achieved what I've achieved. Like I do Your edge. have high expectations of myself. That's probably the thing I struggle most about is finding the balance, you know? Yeah, I can relate to that. Fucking. You tell me you're not a Lynx player and you've just pulled out a nine iron. Yeah, from a fluffy from lie. From 60 yards. From a fluffy lie here. <laughs> this is a, uh, it should be okay. Get down. Love that. It's a little heavy. We're just, okay. Only just just off the back. I mean, carried it a little further. Than I, I love realized. that. To be honest, I think that's really really great shot. I've learned something there. Thank you. Thanks. I've not played much golf. This is part of. I used to be pretty sharp. Yeah. This is uh, rusty. I like it. <laughs> Get in. All right, I think we got a winner. Not bad. <laughs> Good shot. <laughs> okay, see, what puts me off playing that shot, just where my golf is, is that because it's on an upslope, I don't. Th I worry that I'm going to get too much check and it's not going to get up there. Yeah. Which is why I'd favour. Honestly, I preferred, I think your shot was good. And I guess, in a way, you know, I guess it's kind of brought our friendship back around because of a mutual love for this game, yeah. which is why we're here today. And you mentioned about the retirement and that coming up and, you know, mental health in general, a lot of people are more, more open and talking a lot more about it. And a lot more athletes, particularly in, in I think, rugby and, and football. I've certainly spoken to a lot of footballers, men and women, who speak about that transition and, and how challenging it can be why do you think it is so challenging and what can you do or what are you doing to prepare yourself for that kind of adjustment into out of one chapter and into another it is really hard and i've seen loads of people struggle with it and that's kind of one reason why i planned so well for it was because i didn't want to be struggling mm -hmm. um, i didn't want to be constantly trying to find a contract somewhere or finishing rugby and not knowing where to look so I, I worked really hard towards it and that's kind of part of why I put out what I put out on my social media around. Um, I was announcing my next steps rather than closing off one chapter, albeit that's what it was. I wanted to, even if it inspires one young lad in rugby somewhere to start thinking about their next career, um, it's huge. The reason it's hard, I find, the players struggle is a professional sport, you come in in the morning and you get your schedule given to you. You know, this is when you're going to this is when you're going to have your breakfast, this is when you're going to do your weights, uh, then you're going to go out and train, you're going to come and you're going to have your lunch at 12, there's going to be a meeting at 1, and it's all there for you. You just have to turn up and, and train hard, be in good shape, go back and recover and come in and do it again. It's all there for you. Mm -hmm. When you come out of, of a professional environment, no one's there telling you, this is what you need to do if you want a job. Mm -hmm. It's like you're on your own. 
I think if it's all you've ever known, and especially for the majority of us, you come out of school in Scotland and, and you go straight into the academy and then you're straight into pro sports, you don't know any different. And ultimately, I think a lot of people don't like to think about, don't like to think about stopping because it scares them. Whereas I've, I guess I, I have always been lucky because I know what I want to do. And yeah. that's, I'm, I don't take that for granted because other, other guys say, oh, if I knew what I wanted to do, I'd work towards it. But like, you've got, you have to actively start thinking about it and looking because otherwise it, it, it just creeps up on you and then suddenly you're there and you don't have an income and you've got a mortgage to pay and you're, you're then thinking I need to do something. Um, I do think it should be encouraged more from like the, the clubs and the, the unions that this is a real part of um, a real part of life. Like rugby is not going to go on forever. You, you sign a contract when you're young and you think, oh, I've got a 12 year career ahead of me, which luckily I did. But I've seen some guys come out of school and have a two year career. Yeah. And not end through, sometimes it's ended through injury. Sometimes it's just said, look, sorry, we're not going to keep, not going to keep you on. Uh -huh. And that's a big shock for guys mm. because um, you can kind of just get into the, oh, I've made it as a pro player and you think you're just going to keep getting signed, but it's so competitive now in the market. It's not great for professional rugby players with what's happening to some of the clubs down in England. So I'm really trying to encourage the young lads to think about it. It's never too early to think. The one other thing I think it helps with is I believe I was a better player because of it. Because I didn't have the constant stress of I need to play well this week to get a contract. I always wanted to make sure I played well to, to get selected again, but it was never the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. I knew that if anything happened or if uh, I fell out of form or whatever, it's okay, Like I'll go to my flying. It's a fine balance because you don't want to um, you don't want to go half half heartedly into something. Yeah, of course. But I guess I was uh, I was all in on, on rugby, and it comes back to like I would remind myself of my purpose, and that I'm not here to to go half halfway towards anything. I'm all in on rugby until November, mm. and uh, and then once November's done, then I'll then I'll be all in on flying. Saying that with golf, it's you can play a whole round with someone and. My wife will ask me, what did you chat about? And I'll say, I, I don't know. I, they had a really good, I only had a really good drive. And we were like <laughs> saying how nice that was and how she plays. A, it's nonsense, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just like, sometimes the company is all you need. Yeah, agreed. You don't need to really talk about anything. It's just, just good company goes a long way. Yeah, I can tell. Relationship rebuilt, is it? <laughs> <laughs> A bit skinny. Ah, we're okay. okay. We're okay. And you mentioned about the retirement and that coming up, and you know, mental health in general. A lot of people are more, more open and talking a lot more about it, and a lot more athletes, particularly in. in I think rugby and, and football. I've certainly spoken to a lot of footballers, men and women, who speak about that transition and, and how challenging it can be. Why do you think it is so challenging and what can you do or what are you doing to prepare yourself for that kind of adjustment into, out of one chapter and into another? It is really hard and I've seen loads of people struggle with it and that's kind of one reason why I planned so well for it was because I didn't want to be struggling. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to be constantly trying to find a contract somewhere or finishing rugby and not knowing where to look. So I, I worked really hard towards it and that's kind of part of why I put out what I put out on my social media around. Um, I was announcing my next steps rather than closing off one chapter, albeit that's what it was. I wanted to, even if it inspires one young lad in rugby somewhere to start thinking about the next career, um, is huge. The reason it's hard, I find, that players struggle is you, when you, professional sport, you come in in the morning and you get your schedule given to you. You know, this is when you're gonna, this is when you're gonna have your breakfast, this is when you're gonna do your weights, uh, then you're gonna go out and train, you're gonna come and you have your lunch at 12, there's gonna be a meeting at one, and it's all there for you. You just have to turn up and, and train hard, be in good shape, go back and recover and come in and do it again. It's all there for you. Mm -hmm. When you come out of, of a professional environment, no one's there telling you, this is what you need to do if you want a job. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're on your own. And I think if it's all you've ever known, and especially for the majority of us, you come out of school in Scotland and, and you go straight into the academy and then you're straight into pro sports, you don't know any different. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why a lot of people a lot of people struggle with it and, and ultimately I think a lot of people don't like to think about don't like to think about stopping because it scares them. 
like I've said this before, you're only ever one game away from your last game. Yeah. Especially at the top level, like if you have a bad game and... You mean because of injury or...? No, no, like say, say you don't perform well, you have a really... I've seen it before, players have a, a shocker and they don't play again. Really? It can be ruthless and, or, or... Yeah, there can be an injury and then someone else comes through and plays well. So there's always that pressure. And, wow, I'd never even thought about that. Yeah, which is actually... Because since I announced my retirement, I've played maybe five or six games. Played really well. Didn't even, didn't even think about it. Like, I wasn't worried about making mistakes. If I didn't make a mistake, it wasn't, didn't bother me. Really? Because, I don't know, it was just like, I'm just going to, I've got nothing, nothing left to prove. Like, I'm going to get my best version out there and hopefully it's good enough to go to this World Cup because it would be amazing. But I just think it's, it's great advice, but it's so hard to follow when you're actually yep. in the thick of it. And that's a big shock for guys mm. because um, you can kind of just get into the, oh, I've made it as a pro player and you think you're just going to keep getting signed, but it's so competitive now in the market, it's not great for professional rugby players with what's happening to some of the clubs down in England. So I'm really trying to encourage the young lads to think about it. It's never too early to think. The one other thing I think it helps with is I believe I was a better player because of it, because I didn't have the constant stress of, I need to play well this week to get a contract. I always wanted to make sure I played well to, to get selected again, but it was never the be all and end all. Mm -hmm. I knew that if anything happened or if uh, I fell out of form or whatever, it's okay, like, I'll go to my flying. It's a fine balance because you don't want to, um, you don't want to go half, half heartedly into something. Yeah, of course. But I guess I was, uh, I was all in on, on rugby and it comes back to like, I would remind myself of my purpose and that I'm not here to, to go half halfway towards anything, I'm all in on rugby until November, mm. and uh, and then once November's done, then I'll then I'll be all in on flying. Who's the most free player you've ever like witnessed? I like, I like watching Blair Kinghorn play okay. Edinburgh. He's um, like the personality fits that trait of you know he's not bothered about what people think of him, uh -huh. and in a really good way. Like yep. he's he's very confident in himself, and he won't let he won't let mistakes bother him. And I like I find. I find that I'm like in awe of that because I put a lot of pressure on myself. And I do think it's part of why I've achieved what I've achieved. Like I do Your edge. have high expectations of myself. That's probably the thing I struggle most about is finding the balance, you know? Yeah, I can relate to that. I can. You tell me you're not a Lynx player and you just do that nine iron. Yeah, from a fluffy from lie. CCR. From a fluffy lie here. This is a, uh, this should be okay. Get down. A little heavy. We're okay. Yeah, only just, just off the back. I mean, carried it a little further than I, I would have liked. That. To be honest, I think that's really, really great job. I've liked something there. Thank you. So I, we, I want to ask you what some of your earliest memories are on the golf course. Oh yeah. First thing that jumps to mind is playing in air with my nan and granddad. Really? There's a little course there. Couldn't tell you the name of it, but. We used to play it. It's kind of like the Easter holidays at school. You get dropped off. Parents would wave you by, but we'd always get dropped off with our golf clubs. Me and my brother. And uh, at your grandparents. Yes. So they they stayed in air. Right. Back then, and uh, there was this course, and for years we played it like every day when we were there for like an Easter Easter week or whatever. And then eventually it closed for no reason. I don't know why it closed. It just stopped being maintained. But the greens were still there and. They were still in relatively good shape, so we made a flag ourselves. Uh. And we were just going, my granddad's job was always to run down and put the flag in, even though if it was a par five, like, it didn't matter where the hole was, but uh -huh. we always liked to see where the hole was, so he would always have to run. We'd send him running. And, uh, and yeah, that was just, just playing for pure fun. I still remember, it was kind of where I was learning, so my brother had played a bit before, and I'd hit my tee shot. And then I went and I, put, I just picked it up and put a tee under it. I just assumed that's what you did. Uh -huh. And he was like, well, what are you doing? I was like, well, <laughs> you play off tees, do you not? Uh -huh. And that's when I learned you weren't allowed to play off tees off a fairway. <laughs> uh, so how grateful are you to have golf in your life? It's hard to describe. I, I don't know what I would do without it. Like, it's such a, it's such a big part of what brings me happiness like I feel I'm a better father because of it I feel I'm a better husband I feel I'm a better rugby player because I've got other interests and 
you know, my day off, I can get on the course. And I love just putting my AirPods in and playing nine holes on my own sometimes. Yeah. I love playing a four ball, a little, a little bounce match. And I love learning as well. Like I love the aspect of um, trying to get better at something. I've always, always have. And like in team sports as well, you're always relying on other people to do their job well. Yeah. And it always used to frustrate me if uh, I was doing my bit, but others weren't doing theirs. Whereas yeah. golf, it's all on you. It's like, all on and you. I love that. Similar to flying in a way. That's why I like that as well, because ultimately you get out what you put in. So. Yeah. But yet you can get injured to be a pilot. Like that's. Surely yeah. something that you had to consider. Yeah. Oh, there was there was risks, obviously, but for me the the rewards always outweighed the risks. Like of playing for your country. Mm -hmm. Like even I've got the World Cup ahead of me, hopefully, and I make it. There's going to be playing in really high intensity matches. There's, there's risk there, but it's a chance to represent my country, and I would never turn that down mm -hmm. ever. Like I, I speak a lot about what I've sacrificed to have achieved what I've done, and like. When you're younger, you realise all the stuff you're missing out on. Oh, like people are going out or such and such as birthday party, and you can't go to it because you've got training the next day. And it's it's sad, but then you also, you know, they would click their fingers and be in your position if they could. So mm -hmm. you, you have to remind yourself of mm -hmm. that. And I try and remind the young kids of that these days as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Strike. Ah. Wow. Right there. Smothered it last. Go. Oh, it's good. What a kick. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was heading for the bunker all day. <laughs> <laughs> Who's closer? Yeah? What? Yes. <laughs> Don't need to measure. You just jammy. That actually yeah, looks you, like you for you this. Classic amateur golf. Oh, I could just hit this as hard as I could. Or, okay, I could club down, couldn't I? Yeah, and hit a smooth one. Oh, is it going to get all right? Beautiful strike. Close the face a little bit. It's up there. I love that. I think that's a great shot. Good call with a six. Yeah, you're see. welcome. <laughs> oh, I'm about to be chunk that. I'm okay. Got too quick. I'm going to take my mulligan. Take another, yeah. Christ. That's a strike. Drop. Staying out there. Good shot. So it's like that middle of the green kind of shot. Yeah. I think if I was like being aggressive, then maybe the fourth go on. There she is. Nice. I um. Good shot. Yeah, it's like the second guessing your line that, again, as someone who doesn't practice loads, uh -huh. it just gets in my head a little bit. Who's your favourite golfer on the tour to watch? I like watching Rory, only because I feel like when, I feel like as a personality, I would get on really well with him. I feel we've got a lot of similarities. Like I the, think you do. The way yeah. he speaks and he like uh, he's just ultra competitive. Oh, it's gone high. Go, <laughs> get go, there. Go, go. Oh yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> two from two. I forget about the first couple of holes. I'm but. too down. Who the thunk it? <laughs> Great roll. Great roll. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. Didn't move. It's an up and down. If I get closer to the pin, then you have got to get me a ticket for the Scotland-Ireland game in the World Cup. And if you get closest to the pin, I have to get you a ticket to the Ryder Cup. All right. Deal? Deal. 100%. <laughs> okay. All right, I can do that. I Stakes can... have just gone up. Wow. One ball or? One ball. One ball. Okay. Do you want to go first or second? Yeah, okay. I'll go first. Go first. Yeah. The leader steps up. Of course he does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, okay, let's see how we deal with pressure on the golf course. This is like... <laughs> oh, just First step, tea. getting the tee in the ground. Just snap my tee as well, that's fine. Okay, well, eight iron, a little bit of a fade. Out the pin. It should be money. Okay. Here we go. Great. Just if it's there. The wind's got to stay away from it. Bunker. Short. Where is that? Short. It's not made the green. Okay. Maybe. Oh, it's... But it's not in the bunker. Nah. Door's open though. The door is absolutely open. But if neither of us hit the green, then. We'll re We have to re-revolt. Okay. 
I didn't quite get all of that. Scotland Ireland game. That'd be nice. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Some draw you've got in the World Cup. It's pretty pretty epic, isn't it? But I mean it's tough, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Because you've got you Ireland, South Africa, Africa as well. Yeah. So two of the two of the sort of top three teams in the world. Yeah. So and there were a lot of people criticising the way that it's been done. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's bonkers, but ultimately it's just the way of it. Okay, Scotland, don't, Ireland. Don't, don't think about that seat just now. Either. That's what I'm looking at. I'm thinking all about it. I've got a little gin and tonic in my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see it. Oh, Get the hole. it's money. It's money. Get in the hole. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say that's a winner. I'll see well you in Paris. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, great. it'd be great to have you there. That'd be amazing. <laughs> what has been your greatest memory in rugby so far? Greatest memory in rugby would be um, beating England. <laughs> um, for the first time in 10 years, so it was 2018. Uh, we hadn't beat them in 10 years and I was still very early on in my rugby career so I was still very nervous every time I played and um, this was long before I was a captain or anything like that and I remember getting to Murrayfield and Eddie Jones was standing on the centre circle and we always meet on the middle of the pitch in the centre circle and I think he knew that so he was standing there being like and then Gregor went up to him and said you'll need to move <laughs> so then he trundles off and then Gregor comes in he pulls us in and he always says stuff before every match. And normally you're quite focused and it's, it's really good, but you don't always remember everything he says. But I always remember what he said that day. And he just, he just said, lads, 10 years has been long enough. Let's go. And I remember like, I still get shivers thinking about it. And um, yeah, we went out and smashed them. It was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. Oh, the, one, the one other one, actually, that springs to mind mm. is uh, when we played New Zealand in 2017, I think, late 2017. It was shortly after Doddy Weir was announced, diagnosed with MND, mm -hmm. and he brought the match ball out. And it was, just, it was just amazing. He came out with his boys and presented the match ball, hugely inspirational. Like We talked all week about how amazing it was. And um, we played so well like that day. And we were, I think it was nil-nil at halftime, or three all at halftime. And um, Hoggy breaks down the wing towards the end and throws a ball. It doesn't quite come off and it goes out and, and we lose the match. Mm. And we've lost a game at Murrayfield. And I've been in enough games at Murrayfield, I'm sure you have as well. Like, if you lose games, it's, you know, it's a quick cheer, round of applause and out the door. Yeah. And everyone, the ball goes out, the final whistle goes, we've just lost at Murrayfield and the whole crowd are chanting Scotland. Wow. As loud as they would when, when you run out. I'm still I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. And I just remember being so um, inspired that day by how, how much of an effect we can have on, on other people and how lucky we are. Like we get to pull on the Scotland jersey and then um, to have that big uh, effect on other people's joy and happiness was amazing. Like you go, we're like everyone after the game you're sitting in the change room and you're having a drink for example after the England game we're back at the hotel and I'm on Instagram and everybody's story is everyone going nuts <laughs> everyone's out and about got their Scotland tops on and I just think like we did that yeah like that's pretty cool and th those are memories that I'll uh, I'll I'll take to my grave with me I think it's a pretty good note to finish on there Rams yeah it's been an absolute joy to have your company and we wish you all the best for the build up to France and we hope to see you there and I'll see you at the Scotland Ireland game. Yeah, see you there. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks. Cheers.